So I'm Steve Hinshaw. I've been a longtime professor of psychology at UC Berkeley. And for the last few years, I've joined the faculty at UCSF as professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences. So I'm really half time at each campus now. So I grew up in the Midwest in Columbus, Ohio. In some ways, a kind of idyllic upbringing. Dad was a professor of philosophy at Ohio State. Mom was a lecturer in English at Ohio State. My little sister and I would go to campus and visit their offices and go to OSU football games in the big Horseshoe Stadium. And, you know, what could have been better? A, a very academic, um, wonderful atmosphere. Except that dad would disappear into thin air, no explanation before, during, or after for three months, six months, or at one point when I was in third grade, a year at a time, and nobody said anything. What I didn't know is that his lead doctor in Columbus had told him and my mother that if my sister and I ever learned the truth about the reason for these disappearances, that he had psychotic episodes they thought were schizophrenia at the time, it turned out that he had bipolar disorder, which I helped to diagnose later. But if we ever learned about this in the hospitals he was sent to, we would be permanently destroyed. So my mom and dad were forbidden from ever mentioning the topic. So when dad was gone, I thought, well, what have I done wrong? And why won't mom talk about it? And what happens when kids are in a family when something's clearly going wrong, but there's silence? Well, I think a kid has two choices. Number one, you can start to form the belief that the world's a pretty awful, random, cruel place, which isn't obviously a very happy attribution at all. Or you can form another belief, which is maybe it's me, maybe it's my fault. Well. It wasn't my fault, and it's usually not the kid's fault, but maintaining that belief gives you some illusion that you have some control. But if you believe that you're controlling of or responsible for bad things, we call that an internalization process. You take it out against yourself. My first spring break back in Columbus from the East Coast, dad pulled me in his home library, said, son, it's perhaps time, I had just turned 18, you learn about my life, and for our 30 minute initial talk, he told me about his first incident back in Pasadena, California, when he was 16 in the 1930s, jumping off the roof of the family home in Pasadena with the delusional belief that he would sprout wings and fly and send a message to the free world's leaders to stop Hitler and Mussolini. This was a fast rising episode of mania. No one knew this at the time. He was brutally hospitalized for six months and almost died of starvation because he thought the Nazis had poisoned the food supply at the, the hospital. He came home to his five brothers and his father and his stepmother. His mother had died when he was three. And the family decided not to talk about it because they didn't want to jinx his recovery. So silence and shame were kind of inbred into the family. Dad did well in school. He went to Stanford or undergrad. Princeton for grad school, studied with Bertrand Russell and Albert Einstein, became a philosopher. But time after time, he would, quote, go mad, go to some of the nation's worst public mental hospitals where he was beaten and shackled and his identity was pretty shot from it. But each time would miraculously recover because he had bipolar disorder, which again, was not really diagnosed in our country from about 1920 till about 1970. So my mysterious childhood was suddenly explained my end of my freshman year of college. I changed my major to psychology. I had a mission to become a clinical psychologist and help understand serious mental illness, work with kids. I think I identified with kind of lonely kids the way I'd been, but at the same moment, I didn't talk to anybody about this. Professors would think I wouldn't be fit to be a psych major or a clinical psychologist or roommates or girlfriends or anybody. And I carried for years the terror inside me that the schizophrenia that dad supposedly had, we were starting to learn in the 70s. Schizophrenia is transmitted by the genes you inherit. I was probably next. Sleepless nights, terrible anxieties, depressions, until finally I learned to be open with my science and doing work with kids and mental health, but also over the years realizing that the rate limiting factor in all this is talking about it and disclosing and getting help. 
that if we don't overcome the silence and shame and stigma, we've only done half the battle. The NFL behemoths wear pink knee socks two Sundays every fall to support breast cancer. And the professional golfers at the Players' Championship. What color do the pro athletes wear to support mental health? We're not there yet. We can't be like my family way back when, where it was too shameful to raise. If we can talk about it and get treatment and convince lawmakers and the media that this is part of everyday experience, that means we'll be in a different era.